priesthood behind me, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Our call to confession comes from Psalm 56, select verses. O God, have mercy on me, for people are hounding me. My foe attacks me all day long. And, but when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. My enemies will retreat when I call to you for help. This I know. God is on my side. I praise God for what he has promised. Yes, I praise the Lord for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? For you have rescued me from death. You have kept my feet from slipping. So now I can walk in your presence, O oh God, in your life-giving light. Let's pray. Precious Savior, why do we fear your scrutiny? When you examine us, when you look at us, it is with eyes filled with love, grace, and mercy. Still, we are afraid, afraid of just what may surface, those hidden sins, those regrettable thoughts. And yet, dear Lord, we invite you to search each one of us. We ask that you look deeply into our hearts and know us and know ourselves better and to confess the only God that is able to forgive. Precious Lord, we are sorry for our sins. We are sorry for how we have rejected your love and your grace and your mercy. Please forgive all of our offenses against you and against your law. We repent of our callous and insensitive ways. Break our heart of stone, dear Lord, and give us a heart of flesh modeled after your own heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our words of assurance come from Psalm 65, verses 1 through 4. Praise awaits you, our God in Zion. To you, our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you, all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house of your holy temple. Our song of assurance is Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet 
sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joy I feel, the bliss I share of those whose anxious spirits burn with strong desires for I return with such I hasten to the place where God my Savior shows His face and gladly take my station there and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joys of my perdition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me see his face, believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my every care and wait for the sweet hour of Before we go to God in a uh, congregational prayer, I uh, do have one announcement. <clears throat> I, excuse me, I uh, had a chance to have a conversation with Milo Van Dyke, and this is more for our, our Cornerstone community. But uh, Nancy goes in this next week for uh, laparoscopic surgery. They are going to take some biopsies of the mass that she has and uh, determine the uh, what those masses are, and, and uh, they're also going to put a port in her for chemotherapy, so the, after that port is healed, she'll be starting her chemotherapy. Milo asked that the Cornerstone community keep uh, them and in your prayers. Uh, they asked that they wish that they could get together and, and uh, have you pray over them like they did Milo when he was, had his bout with cancer. But they, they ask that you pray wherever you are, you are at for Nancy. Uh, for everything to go smoothly this next week. And that uh, she will be healed of her cancer. We also want to lift up uh, Todd Zydema, Pastor Todd, uh, the pastor of Hope Christian Reformed Church. And his family as they are dealing with uh, his illness. And... Uh, his being um, quarantined or isolated, and uh, the family and he and himself working through that that different scenario. So, let's go to God in a time of prayer. Most gracious and holy God, we thank you for everything that you are. You are the God who provides for each and every one of our needs. You provide the sunshine. You provide the rain. You provide the warm temperatures. You provide the fertile soil. You activate the seed so it sprouts. Lord, we see the plants growing, the crops in the field, the leaves on the trees. And we know, Lord, that during this time of new birth that you are in control of your creation. That nothing is too great or too, too minuscule for you. You watch over it all. You care for it all. Father, we stand in awe of you. Lord, we do lift up our concerns to you. We lift up Pastor Todd and his family as they're going through this time of isolation and as uncertainty, not knowing whether Todd has been has the virus or just a normal flu we ask lord that you watch over him and his family and that you keep them safe during this time we pray also for milo and nancy van dyke we ask lord that your 
healing mercies rain down onto to Nancy as she goes through treatment. We ask, Lord, that her body be rid of the cancer. We pray also, Lord, for those who are dealing with the ill effects of the isolation, for those who are who are isolated to assisted living facilities and to care facilities, extended care facilities and hospitals. Lord, we lift them up to you. We know that the, the isolation, the, the lack of visitors and lack of contact with the outside world is, is raining on them. It's, it's having an adverse effect on them. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to let your Holy Spirit envelop them to wrap his loving arms around them like a warm blanket on a cold winter evening. We pray for all of those who are dealing with the isolation on the inside. We ask, Lord, that you continue to let your spirit reign throughout Cornerstone and throughout the, the penitentiary. We pray, Lord, that the men of Cornerstone will be bold and, and will be, be compassionate and share their faith and look for those who are searching for you as well, those whose hearts are heavy, those who may not know you as Lord and Savior of their life. We ask, Lord, that you continue to provide for this technology so that we can worship together as two churches, miles apart, but yet all brothers and sisters in your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the technology that allows this, and we ask, Lord, that you continue to let this technology spread your word. And, Lord, we pray for our country and for our elected leaders. We know, Lord, that this is a difficult time, and it's a stressful time, and we ask that whatever decision that they make, that it will be a spirit-filled decision, something that will bring you honor and glory, something that you have chosen them to do specifically, not something that will bring them power or prestige, but something that will bring you honor and glory. We pray for all of those around the world who have been affected by this virus. We ask, Lord, for healing. We ask for, for peace. We ask for comfort for those who have lost family members and are unable to grieve as they normally would. We ask, Lord, that you comfort them as well. And Father, there's many other things we can thank you for. We can thank you for the food on our table. We can thank you for places to sleep, for our beds, for running water. Lord, when we look at how much we have we have so much more than many throughout the world. Help us, Lord, to count our blessings and to name them one by one. And let that first blessing that we count be the grace and forgiveness of all our sins through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and that promise of eternal life. We pray this all, dear Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. The song of preparation that we, may, that we have chosen today may be a new song to you, but it tells a story and, and gives a testimony of the way that many times in this life we reach the end of ourselves whether that be emotionally or financially or our physical health, 
Um, we run out of reserves. We reach a place where we feel like we can't go on any farther. But it's in moments like that, sometimes that God shows up and, sh and lets us see that he's in control and that he is faithful. And so maybe someone uh, listening to worship today feels like you're at the end of yourself. But think back on the times when he has been faithful in the past and know that he will do it again. And, and this is, uh, that's the title of our song, Do It Again. <laughs> 